On October 7th, 2017, Archbishop Salvatore Cordelione consecrated the Archdiocese of San Francisco, of which he is the shepherd as the Archbishop to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And he did this as part of the celebrations connected to the 100th anniversary of a very special event, which is actually a series of events, a series of apparitions of the mother of Jesus Christ to three shepherd children in Fatima, Portugal. And one of the things that our Blessed Mother asked for when she came to the three shepherd children as essential to peace was consecration. Consecration is a biblical concept. It usually is connected to worship, um, especially in the Old Testament when something is consecrated. That means that it is set apart specifically for uh, the worship of God, specifically dedicated to the worship of God. You now she asked for the children to tell the Pope uh, to consecrate Russia to her Immaculate Heart um, as part of the healing of the world from communism. And, and so the, the Pope did that in, eventually in 1984, consecrating indeed the whole world uh, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And so part of the Fatima spirituality is this notion of consecration. So by giving the Archdiocese to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, by dedicating in a very intense way uh, this particular church in this way, Archbishop Cordelione has placed us under her protection. He has, as it were, gathered us under her mantle. He has made us entitled to many specific graces that come with belonging intentionally to her in this way. He has brought to us in our own practical lives the blessings of peace that she promised at Fatima. We often speak this way that a person has a good heart or I, you know, I love you with all my heart. And so the heart symbolizes the whole person. With our Lord especially it symbolizes his whole humanity, his sacred humanity. And with Our Lady, it symbolizes her whole person. And even more specifically, the love which that person bears in, in his or her will. So when we are honoring the heart of Mary, we are honoring her holiness. We are honoring this unique holiness to which she has been elevated by Almighty God, conceived as she was full of grace, without sin, growing day by day, in faith, hope, and charity, in, in her obedience to the will of God, in her remarkable humility. And so this is the, the object of this devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And the purpose of the devotion is so that our hearts can live in her heart. And this is another reason why Jesus Christ wants to point out the heart of his mother, not only because he's a good son honoring his mother, uh, not only because he just loves her so much, but also because he loves us so much. And so he wants us to imitate her. She who always heard the word of God and kept it. Our Lady, when she appeared at Fatima, revealed herself as Our Lady of the Rosary. And she asked the children, and indeed the whole world, to pray the rosary daily for peace, for peace in the world, for peace in our hearts. And so at the center of the Fatima, event is the Holy Rosary. And so the events of the consecration of our Archdiocese began with the Holy Rosary. We gathered in the cathedral and recited together with the Archbishop the Holy Rosary. One of the great blessings that the church offers to us in praying the Rosary when we come together as a family or in a church, uh, even by ourselves in a church, is uh, that, it, that it comes with a plenary indulgence. So many thousands of Catholics of the Archdiocese uh, received this plenary indulgence as they gathered with their shepherd to recite the Holy Rosary, placing themselves into the heart of Mary. In the Rosary, we meditate on the mysteries of the life of Jesus Christ. St. Luke tells us that Mary kept these mysteries, pondering them in her heart. And so to recite the Holy Rosary is to enter into the Immaculate Heart of Mary, to learn to pray, as St. John Paul II said, 
to learn to contemplate the face of Christ at the school of Mary. After the Holy Rosary, the Archbishop then offered the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary for the feast day. And so as Mary had a special role in mothering God's Son, so she has a special role in mothering us into life in her Son. What we are doing today cannot be relegated to being simply a moving event and pleasant memory in the history of our Archdiocese. Far from being something we check off on a to-do list, what we are about today is nothing less than a call to arms, to spiritual arms. It is the central part of her message wherever and whenever she appears. Prayer, penance, and adoration. I therefore call on all of the faithful of the Archdiocese of San Francisco to take to heart this threefold recipe for peace and salvation as Our Lady has asked us. I ask every Catholic in the Archdiocese of San Francisco, if you are not doing so already, to pray the Rosary every day. And I ask all families to pray the Rosary together at least once a week. There can be no spiritual revival, and especially a revival of Eucharistic devotion, without a renewal in our practice of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. I call on all of the faithful of the Archdiocese of San Francisco to increase with sincerity and frequency in availing themselves of this sacrament, and as a minimum, to confess their sins in the sacrament at least once a month. I ask every Catholic in the Archdiocese of San Francisco to dedicate some time each week to prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. I ask all of our faithful to make the first five Saturdays a priority in their devotional life by observing it once a year. Mary is always there to pick us up and carry us to her son. She wants to take us through her maternal heart from the darkness in which we walk to the light of her son, and her son wants us to allow her to do so. Let us then do that by obeying her request to do whatever he tells us. That is, let us grant her requests so that we may always keep our eyes fixed on him, her son, the son of God and savior of the world. After Holy Mass then, through the cathedral, outside the cathedral doors, and onto the streets of San Francisco, in solemn procession, how many people even just driving in their cars received graces that day? How many people, maybe their lives were even changed in that moment? Uh, perhaps we will know one day, we certainly will know in heaven. And so, so many graces were poured out onto the city of San Francisco. After that solemn procession, then the Archbishop prayed the prayer of consecration, the solemn act whereby he placed his entire spiritual family under the protection of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. To consecrate is like to open the door and just let all this light flood into our lives. And that happened uh, at the end of the ceremony when the Archbishop did the solemn act of consecration. After this moment then of consecration, the Archbishop then blessed the people with the Eucharist. And actually, there's a, a, a very important distinction to be made here that it was actually not the Archbishop who blessed the people, but it was Jesus Christ himself from the Eucharist who blessed the people. We can't predict the power of a consecration. It's actually in the very nature of the consecration that we turn over control of ourselves, of our, our families, of our parishes, of our archdiocese, to the mother of God, that we are giving her everything. And so whatever she wishes to do with the consecration, she will do. However she wishes to make use of us, she will reveal to us. St. Louis Marie de Montfort said, God has given us all things, including himself, through the Blessed Virgin Mary. So why should we not also then give God all things, including ourselves, to him through the Blessed Virgin Mary? This is the logic of consecration. 
in a certain sense, you're like writing a blank check. You're saying, Mother, do with me what you will. I am entirely at your disposition, all that I am and have. And so the Archbishop has done this with our Archdiocese. It's a kind of a step in faith. It's a kind of a step in the dark. We don't know where it will lead, uh, but we do trust in her. We trust in her love, and we trust that she will take care of us and lead us to her son, Jesus, always.